Yo, what's good, Knicks fans? I am Ja So Focus. I'm French, the bro host, and we would like to welcome you to the Knicks Take Podcast. This is episode 66. And this is a weekly podcast where we cover the biggest Knicks news of the week. Make sure you follow us on our socials. You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, slash X, by searching for the Knicks Take. Also, make sure you check out... Uh, make sure you check out our website, nickstake.com and if you love what you hear please make sure you subscribe to us on the platform that you're listening to us on if you're on youtube hit the notification bell and lastly share this with any next fans who might enjoy the show what it do And now, the show. Uh, this week on the Knicks Take Podcast, we are going to go over the results of the in-season Ask tournament. Kick. Oh, my bad. Thanks. In-season tournament, uh, or at least what we've en- encountered so far in regards to the Knicks. Uh, the first game of the in-season tournament, the Knicks played against the Milwaukee Bucks, and then we faced off against the Boston Celtics. What happened in the in-season tournament? Well, we're going to find out right now. After, well, actually, before we get into that, uh, we're also going to talk about how uh, 20 games in to the season. How are we feeling about the New York Knicks? This is the quarter point. 20 games, 20 and a half games really is uh, considered the quarter point for uh, an NBA season. So we're going to look back and we're going to, well, we're not really going to look back. We're just going to tell you how we feel at this point in time. Uh, we're not really going to go over any of the games, but we might touch up on some of the past games that, that, uh, came up in, in our mind and uh, give our analysis in regards to that. Then we're going to give you a brief preview of the upcoming games. Sure. And now the recap of the in-season tournament for the Knicks. The Knicks went down to Milwaukee for the quarter final of the in-season tournament. AKA the knockout round. To see who was determined to be the uh, opponent for the Indiana Pacers who beat up on Boston to get to the, to Las Vegas. So the Knicks went down to Milwaukee. It was a pretty competitive first half, the highest scoring first half so far for any team, for any two teams this NBA season. And the Knicks went into halftime tied up. Julius Randle didn't miss a shot for the first half. Mm-hmm. He was cooking, but it seemed like him and uh, was it Jalen Brunson who were the only consistent scorers for, throughout the first half? I would, I, I would probably not even say Jalen Brunson. I mean, yes, he was scoring, but yeah, it, it was really based based on the work that they really put in. Uh, but mostly, I would just say it was Julius. Julius was the uh, primary scorer and threat for the Knicks. And um, I think he said coming into the game that he was already packed for Vegas. So he came, he, he played yeah. like he's packed for Vegas. Yeah, he came out trying to get this win for sure. Um, Jalen Brunson wasn't really hitting his threes or anything like that, but he was definitely the second leading scorer throughout this game. Mm -hmm. But once the third quarter started, I started to get, you know... Get that feeling? Get that feeling. Remember the third quarter of Doom that the Knicks used to be... Well, what, what was it in the beginning of the 17 years, 17 win season where that was introduced? Because that that third quarter of doom has been sticking with us through some times. We've had some rough, rough times in regards to uh, not showing up mm-hmm. in third quarters yeah. and either losing games or making games closer than they should be in the third quarter. Yeah, because Giannis was going crazy in that third quarter. Dame was getting off. He got up to a slow start when Grimes was on him. He was going off, not getting off. Pause. <laughs> he, he was he was getting his shot off. He was getting it off. So <laughs> the Bucks basically just came alive. The crowd got into it, and after that third quarter, it was pretty much the game was over. Mm-hmm. Um, the Knicks couldn't really get any runs going to get back into this game. They couldn't get any consistent stops, and the Knicks lost this game one forty six to one twenty two. Mm-hmm. Quentin Grimes only took one shot this game. 
Yep. Had four personal fouls, finished the game with no points. Mm -hmm. He was the only starter to not score. Um, we didn't get much production from the bench. Josh Hart was the leading scorer with 11 points. Um, he played 26 minutes. Emmanuel quickly went one, one for seven from the field. And we, we didn't really get much production this game, at least in the second half from uh, any Knicks outside of Julius Randle. Um, Mitch only finished the game with four rebounds. I feel like Brooke Lopez had him uncomfortable this game. It seems like anytime Mitch goes against a solidified center who can stretch the floor and play extremely well on the defensive end, he doesn't really have an impactful game. Um, and yeah, this was just a tough way to get knocked out of the tournament. Um, what are your thoughts on this game? Um, so I, I'm looking at the first half stats. We'll start off with that because it's the first half. Mm -hmm. uh, RJ Barrett shot 30%. And when I look at this game, I'm thinking about RJ Barrett and I'm looking at the stats and I'm like, it just doesn't. <laughs> I, I got <laughs> Maybe I need to watch this game another time because I felt like the, when the game started, I thought RJ Barrett was playing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt uh, even though his shot wasn't falling, um, I thought that he had a better first half than the second half. But in the first half, he shot 30 percent. He went to the foul line four times, made all four. Um, and then you contrast that with his second half. He went 50 percent. He made one of his made his only three in the second half. And he went to the line again four times. Um, and, and I think that the difference is that I think that he was making better reads as far as passes go in the first half versus the second half. Um, Jalen Brunson. <sighs> Throughout the game, you could see something was not right. Um, he has been shooting the ball from behind the three-point line at a, at a great clip. And in this game, he took five threes. I don't know, actually. So five. And he missed all five. And I'm pretty sure he missed all five in the first half. He didn't shoot a three in the second half. And I think that was the primary, was one of the primary reasons why the Knicks could not win. Because he's he's been holding us up with his prolific three-point shooting. Especially when, when Julius Randle wasn't playing well. So against a team like the Milwaukee Bucks... You can't have him shoot poorly like that. You need him. You need your best players to play at their best against the best teams. Uh, it's a lot of bests in that sense, but it, but it's true. When you have when you're not considered a, a, like an elite team like that, you got you can't have games like this where your best shooter, which this season is Jalen Brunson, where he's not shooting well. Even when other guys step up, that only brings you back to where you are. You need to have. You need to have an above average game, especially against the Milwaukee Bucks team, who's clicking on all cylinders the way that they were in this game. Yeah, Brunson had Malik Beasley looking like Drew Holiday out there. I'm not going to lie. I, I know Malik Beasley's a good shooter and stuff. He's a good scorer. He's a good scorer, but I, it seemed like he was causing Brunson some problems. And then he went six for 10 from three. Mm -hmm. Dame hit five threes. Even Giannis got off from three. Like he shot a three in someone's face, yep. bringing yeah. the ball up and then. Yeah, it was literally just three point scoring. It, it's, the Knicks went seven for twenty three. The Bucks went twenty three for thirty eight. So yeah, speaking of um, <clears throat> uh, who did you just mention? Um, on the Bucks? Yeah, Malik Beasley. Yeah. Speaking of Malik Beasley, he's not known as a defender, and it seemed like he was like for some reason Brunson was having trouble with him. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they tipped the cap to the Bucks. You knew that when they when they got it all together, everybody was playing well. This is the type of game that they could have, and you have to play at your absolute best. And the Knicks did not. Yeah. So we didn't even get in, like <laughs> Let's just talk. last the last episode we were talking about Divincenzo going off from three. Mm -hmm. He's been on a hot streak. He only hit one for four. Quickly going one for four. Like yeah, uh, it was just a tough all around second half from the Knicks. Yeah. So. Um, quickly finished one for seven. <sighs> yeah. It, you 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 expect that if you have one of the best bench units in the league, that you would have that advantage against a team whose bench unit is usually shaky, mm -hmm. or at least you'll you'll break even. And oh, that 
the, another main point the three-point shooting i don't know how much you got into that did you did you talk about the milwaukee bucks three-point shooting historic yeah. three-point shooting yeah um I, here's a stat crazy. here's a stat that i uh looked up at the end of the game i just counted all of the threes from the bench unit and the bench unit outshot the entire knicks team from three <laughs> for the game so I think there was a 45 point advantage from behind the three point arc mm -hmm. that tells you the story of the game. When that other when the other team is beating you from the three point line by 45 points, you're probably going to lose by 20. And, and they beat us on rebounding by one. Yes. We wasn't getting no yeah. offensive rebounds this game like how we we're accustomed to doing. We normally dominate the glass against teams. It's never like this neck and neck. And it seemed like the yeah. last few weeks has been like that. Yeah. And, and to be fair to the Knicks, this is an effort. They scored 122 points. This is an effort where if they played the exact same way against 20 teams in the league, they'll win this game. Yeah. Um, but this is not, the Milwaukee Bucks is not one of those 20 teams. Yeah. Like they are good, especially when they're playing like that. Not that they like, had extravagant performances from Giannis and Damian Lillard, but they both did what they normally do. And that's all they needed to do against this team when the rest of their team is playing so well. Yeah, um, yeah we, I think we covered it all. Bench unit, that Knicks took the loss there. Rebounding, the Knicks took the loss there. Three-point shooting, the Knicks took the loss there. And there was no chance for them to win in regards to all those things. Assist too. Yeah, well, assist is not... I'm, I'm mentioning those things because those are the things that the Knicks should have an advantage in. Bench, rebounding, and three-point shooting. But Knicks, well, we'll talk about that later. Um, I only bring it up because I feel like the Knicks, when they stop moving the ball, mm -hmm. the offense doesn't seem to get going. It seemed like Julius no, Randle, because he wasn't missing a shot, it felt like he had to just go into the post every play and create something out of nothing. Um, we I'm, got a lot of playmakers on the team, so I feel like we should be able... And we got the continuity we, we've been playing together for three seasons together for the most part guys should know where guys are supposed to be on the floor know how to get guys open shots and this I mean, wasn't one of those types of games my only pushback to you is the Knicks had 27 assists um probably mostly from the first half if, if you remember in this game mm -hmm. the first half the Knicks were really trying to push the ball really trying to get those fast break points trying to make the Bucks run mm -hmm. And um, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, Tw uh, 17 of their 27 assists happened in the first half. Yeah. So and it was neck and neck at that point. Yes. So yes, while you could say that um, if the Knicks had passed the ball more, maybe this would have been a closer game. But the the Knicks are not known as one of the better passer passing teams in the league. That's why I don't really consider it. 27 assists for the Knicks for this season is about average for them. You know, it's not one of their higher numbers. It's, you know, it's not, you know, obviously they have passed the ball more. And when they have passed the ball more, they've usually won. But I'm not coming out here looking for the Knicks to beat you by the pass, even though they can. I'm looking for the Knicks to out-rebound you, which they didn't. I'm looking for the Knicks to kill you in, from the second line up the bench unit which they didn't. And I'm looking for the Knicks to shoot the ball from three at a decent clip. They shot 30% from three. And it's probably only 30% because Miles McBride um, dropped dropped his only uh, three-point shot in the game. Um, yeah, so that that that's that's why. I'm not really... I like to see the Knicks pass. I don't want to see them pass and like have less than 20 assists in a game. That's bad for them. But 27 assists... You passed the ball enough for this team. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, what what happened after this game? <sighs> after this game, the Knicks got the grand prize of playing the Boston Celtics at TD Garden. No, that's not what I'm referencing, sir. Oh, my boy. <laughs> what you referencing? I'm referencing what happened with Quentin Grimes. I will go into the Boston Celtics. Go ahead. Quentin Grimes. Yeah, all right, I'll do it then. Uh, so after this game, Quentin Grimes said to some reporters. Oh, yeah, my <laughs> fault. <laughs> uh, Quentin Grimes said to some reporters that uh, he wasn't happy with his role in the offense. That's not verbatim, but basically he felt like he was like kind of like what Josh said. Um, he wasn't getting the ball enough. Um, he felt like if as soon as he shoots the ball, if he misses, he's coming out of the game. Um, He's, it seemed like he was lacking confidence and all this kind of stuff. And um, 
Yeah, that that that's ended up um, becoming a big discussion point. They even asked Tom Thibodeau about uh, Quentin Grimes's play. To to his credit, said that he didn't really think anybody uh, played particularly well, which I've kind of felt like he kind of overlooked how Julius Randle played. He who played uh, amazingly in this game. Um, but outside of Julius Randle, yeah, nobody else really played particularly well. Um, but I think I think that it was fair kind of to point criticism at Quentin Grimes for his lack of his own lack of involvement in the offense. And um, how did you feel about his comments uh, after the game? I think these guys probably just look at social media a lot after games and take what fans say too seriously. Quentin Grimes is still a young player. I feel like he was still playing pretty well, even though he wasn't shooting. He was still playing great defense. And it just seemed like he took a, a hit to his confidence. And he didn't really look like himself in this game. Um, so for him to make these comments, it just felt like he got to just get himself back on track. Mm -hmm. um, take the shots that you are comfortable taking. If you don't see a shot and you see a driving lane drive, if someone steps up, kick it off to the to whoever's man that is. Like he normally, like he, he normally plays the game with IQ. So. It just seemed like he wasn't really comfortable out there and the pressure seemed like it was getting to him. So he only played 18 minutes this game. I think Tibbs saw that as well. He didn't really play well. So I, 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 I see like his play basically reflects what he was saying in the post game. He doesn't have confidence. He doesn't feel comfortable shooting the shots that he normally would shoot because he felt like he's going to get taken out the game if he doesn't. Mm -hmm. make the shot i think he said like each shot felt like a 20 20 pound shot or something like that it's like something crazy yeah. but like like he had weights on when he was putting up the shot yeah so like i i just want him to get comfortable back in his role because when he's if he's gonna shoot a good shot it's not like if he misses it he's gonna get taken out the game if he just continues to take that shot instead of passing it up that's what's gonna keep him in the game mm -hmm. I feel like because he feel like he misses a shot, he can't shoot the next one. That's why he comes out the game and then um, DiVincenzo has to come in because DiVincenzo misses shots too and he ain't worried about getting taken out the, the, the lineup. Yeah, that's a, I think that's just a perspective thing. Um, yeah, Quentin Grimes' role is Quentin Grimes' role. He'll be, get, he'll be taken out of the game at certain points in the first half, regardless of how he plays. And it's only in the second half of the game to where um, if you didn't play well, you'll play less. And if you did play well, you'll play more. And um, you I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say that he has been in his own head. Um, and if he had not been in his own head, then none of this would be a concern for him. Yeah, if you're not playing confident, there's no way you're gonna stay on the floor. Right. It's as simple as it's, that. It's not. This is not a. This is not a team where plays are run for you, right? And um, you know, it's not a. This is. I think there's some validity to some of his statements. Um, I think there's been a lot of times where he's looked off because. But he's looked off because he's missed shots. He's missed a lot of shots. And he, he passes them up too. And he passes up a lot of shots. So I'm not gonna, you know, if if the if the the role of you if your role on offense is not being um executed properly, we're gonna look away from you. And that's that's your fault. And if you execute your what your role is better, you'll get the ball more. So it's not anybody like, yes, there are times where it is. Julius Randle, Jalen Brunson, R.J. Barrett's fault that you're not seeing the ball more. But there's a lot of times also where it's also your fault. So, uh, you know, while Quentin Grimes does have a point, he also has to look at himself in the mirror and say, I am going to take advantage of the minutes that are given to me. Like, you can never hear something like this coming out of R.J. Barrett's mouth. <laughs> well, there's a reason why, and that's because he's a significant part of the offense. And that's be also because 
his skills are more clearly defined than Quentin Grimes. Is but it really? Though? I, it is. I feel like it's, it's clearly but, defined because of how he plays. Like, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't let no one. Exactly. But, but what you but you and me are saying the same thing. Okay. It's because of how RJ plays. RJ Barrett plays with the confidence of right. a superstar, That's even though saying. he is not one. Right. And Quentin Grimes doesn't need to have. He doesn't need to play like he's a superstar, but he needs to play, you know, within the role of the offense, how well he he, he can normally play. So um, moving on from from uh, Milwaukee, the Knicks enter the first consolation round ever of the in-season tournament against the Boston Celtics. In-season consolation round is the round where the two losers of the quarterfinals slash the knockout round, they play against each other. And... Um, <laughs> it's a glorified, uh, you Slide know, boxing match. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, all right, you guys lost. Um, uh, yeah, okay, you guys get this consolation round, whatever. Um, so coming into this game, there's a lot of uh questions as far as what's going to happen with Quentin Grimes as a result of his comments. And the New York Knicks enter yesterday, Friday, December 8th, 2023, at the TD Jakes slash TD Garden Arena. Uh, <laughs> listen, this this arena thing, the arena name thing is going to be my my st- shtick for the whole year. I just, see. Just get used to it. <laughs> uh, Boston came into this game undefeated at home, which makes you, like, look back at this in-season tournament and be like, hmm. Maybe the Knicks should have, like, won that game against uh, the Charlotte Hornets, but just by a smaller margin so that the Miami Heat could. (laughs) Because you just got slapped against Milwaukee, and now you're about, you're entering, you know, Boston and against a team who is undefeated at home. Yeah, I got the same mentality. Like, Like, still sharp and sharp and still. I ain't mad at it. Listen, I'm not mad at it, but, man, um... These are two extra games that you did not have to play. And if you win, it's a different story. But when you lose, <laughs> you better hope that you're you're of the caliber or better than the other team. And, um, well, Quentin Grimes, um, as I just kind of foreshadowed, came into this game outside of the starting lineup. He was pulled, something that I did not expect to happen. Me neither. Um... And Dante DiVincenzo was the nominal starter, which I also surprised me because I figured if anybody was going to be in the starting lineup, it would have probably been Josh Hart. But I understand why they didn't do that. Or quickly. No. Quickly is quickly is going to be coming off the bench until Jalen Brunson is injured for some time. Um, but the, I, I only thought quickly because normally if Brunson sits down, the, his substitute that comes in is DiVincenzo. Mm-hmm. Because he's that's only, point guard. That's only, that's only to maximize... Um, Shooting? No, Jalen Brunson's time on the court. Um, Jalen Brunson... <sighs> Jalen Brunson is our point guard. Quickly is our point guard. And, and that's the, that is a role that has clearly been defined by Tom Thibodeau. Yeah. Um, he, they can play next to each other, and they do play next to each other. Um, quickly is our most important player coming off of the bench. Uh, him and Isaiah Hartenstein, and um, yeah, I, I I don't expect quickly to start a single game unless Jalen Brunson is out. So, first half, switch seemed to play out between those two players. Seemed like okay. Dante DiVincenzo is hitting, hitting, hitting threes with the starting lineup. Quentin Grimes comes out. He starts knocking down some shots. Looks a lot more like the player that he was last season, as opposed to the I don't know what he, the shell of himself that he was this year. The one who's scared to shoot, scared to pass, or scared to, scared to hold the ball, scared to dribble, scared to do anything but pass. Um, and he seemed more comfortable. And also, to the Knicks' credit, they seem to actually look for him a little bit more in the first half. Um, but in a complete reversal from last game against the Milwaukee Bucks, it seemed like the Knicks were in this game despite Julius Randle's, not his offense, but his decision-making. Um, he definitely scored a lot, but when you have six turnovers, which is, you know, 
it's 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 a decent it, like it's not too much it's it's a decent amount for a team you know um especially a team who averages around 10 turnovers a game like the knicks which is a low scoring a low turnover team um so six all right you just you did six turnovers five of the turnovers was julius Randle by himself in the first half so and it seemed to me like julius Randle's having a really good game but he's making some decisions out there that I just don't you're 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 keeping the Knicks, you know, either behind, you know, or you're keeping them from taking the lead because of these decisions that you're making. Like if he didn't come into this game, um go ahead, say what you want to say. I was gonna say I feel like it was also great defense on Boston's part. Like Drew Holiday got at least 100. two of those turnovers from him from one on the fast break when RJ was like waving his hand down the middle and then Drew Holiday draws a charge and but then that play that you move Drew Holiday strips him like but that play that you're referring to he, the ball should have been out of his hand before RJ Barrett was started waving I get like, it but it's also RJ a mismatch was, it's 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 a mismatch against one of the better defensive teams in the league. Yeah, Instead of trying to say, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, you have to take the easy points where you can get them. Yeah. And that it's that kind of mindset that Milwaukee was never going to take advantage of, but that Boston absolutely will. And they did. You know, it, it, there's, there's a reason why certain teams, they look to hunt Randall because he's... He, <laughs> On on both ends, they 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 double team him because they figure figure he's going to make a mistake, which he sometimes does on offense. And on defense, they're gonna target him because he's not gonna put forth that requisite effort effort unless he's really really motivated to 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 move around on the defensive end. So, and you know that play like like you just mentioned, yeah, that was a very good defensive play. You know, against any other team, Randall is perfectly. Uh, you know, I'll give him the pass. But you got you going up against one of the best defensive teams in the league. You just got to give up the ball and get it to the open man. And, you know, he seemed to be, I'll give him this, he did seem to be passing the ball a lot more and better in the first half. But then in the second half, that went away too, <laughs> right? Like he, he held the ball. He didn't want to, he didn't want to pass. He didn't want to, <sighs> it, it was, it, it, I, I don't know how to I don't know how to um, rate this game from Julius Randle it was a great offensive showing from him it was, a, it was a decent game from him I'm not gonna say it was too bad or it was too good this was just like it's not even an average it's a, it's a little bit of a below average Julius Randle game um, he went 3 for 4 from 3 and these were all important threes. We were starting to make a comeback in the second half. Right. And he led the team in three-point um, shooting. But, yeah, like like you said, the decision-making that he was... He could have he, he could have had a lot more assists this game. Let's just put it like that. The turnovers kind of crippled him a little bit this game. And it was not kind of. It, it was... I, I, feel, I personally feel that the fact that the fact that he had six turnovers in, in the first three quarters alone is it played a very important uh, role into why he didn't play a significant part of the fourth quarter. But Boston I, also just played incredible. Like Derek White yeah, went for thirty points. One hundred percent. Chris Stapps also had a, like a, a three for six from three game, four for four from the free throw line. Tatum didn't even score in the first quarter, I don't believe, and then he finishes the game with twenty five points. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna boil it down to this. <clears throat> the Knicks were already behind, partially because of Randall's five turnovers in the first half. They were also down because, once again, for the second straight game, Jalen Brunson shot five threes and missed all five. And then number three, the third quarter of Doom. That then the the Bucks were up or, or excuse me the Bucks the Celtics were up by I think ten points uh, or nine points excuse me in the, it, to start the second half they ballooned that that lead up to twenty points by you know before the third quarter was over and you can't win games like that. Um, Bench played uh, pretty well though. They did 
And unlike in that Milwaukee game, uh, the Knicks actually did fight back and they cut their, the lead to seven with six minutes remaining in the game. Um, but again, Boston is a really, really good team. <laughs> like, like you have to play, you know, you can't make mistakes to, to the degree that the Knicks were making them. Obviously, there's no way that you can play a full 48 minute stretch without making any mistakes. But it's just too many, too many mistakes. Um, and, and a lot of them came from Julius Randle on both ends of the court. Um, and it's not, it's not just Julius Randle's fault that the Knicks lost this game. I want to make that very clear. I don't want to, I don't, I'm not even going to say that he was the primary reason that he lost, but it is just too many, um, defensive lapses, too many lack of days, too much lack of days go play. And this is a team that you cannot do that against. And then to make matters worse, um, with the less than 30 seconds left in the game, the Knicks down 10. Jalen Brunson twisted his ankle by stepping on Peyton Pritchard's foot and limp, limped off the court. Looked like he was in a lot of pain. And after that, the Celtics just kind of held the ball and won the game 133 to 123 with uh, a potential Jalen Brunson injury, uh, another sh uh, double digit loss to a team that um, you could say the Knicks are not in the same league as. And yeah, that, that's that's what I got for this one. Even though we lost three straight games to Boston plus the preseason games, I don't feel like they're that much better than us still. Like we well, had this game for the taking. Which um, one? This one. Like we made that run late in the fourth quarter and uh, I don't know. I just felt like that game we could have came back and won. That's the that's the Knicks fan in me. That's the Knicks I'm fan biased. Yeah, uh, even when they were making the comeback, I was hopeful. I'm not gonna say I wasn't. I, I'm not gonna say, "Hey, man, if the Knicks can just close this to two, then it'll be anybody's game." But they got to close it to two first before I can get that. I wasn't there. Even when they closed it to seven, I'm like, "Yeah, I just don't see them having the energy to to to." bring this back they've done it before they did it against the heat right the heat and the celtics are not the same bro yeah, like, uh, the the heat are not the celtics do you feel like boston can't be beat the, boston has been beat any I'm every from new york like the new york knicks can beat any team that's what i'm saying but there are a few teams to when they're clicking on all cylinders the knicks had better also be clicking on all cylinders in order to beat that team and there are teams where the Knicks don't have to be clicking on all cylinders to win. And there are teams where if the other team is not clicking on all cylinders, the Knicks better win. The, reason I the Celtics is the Celtics, the Celtics and the Milwaukee Bucks, like I said, to start the, the, this this season of the Knicks Take podcast. There's only two teams that, you know, scare me in the East, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics. We just played both of them, and they both blew up. They they both took twenty point leads uh, in the second half against us. Um, and this it's a trend. It's a trend. We've seen it so far in the season. Um, and, uh, the Phoenix Suns were missing Kevin Durant and, and uh, Bradley Beal beat us like with just with Devin Booker that's a team that once they're fully healthy that's a team I don't see as like you the Knicks have to be clicking on all cylinders in order to win and we couldn't beat them even when it was just when it, it was when it was just Devin Booker um Boston this is our uh this is our third game third regular season game against them we haven't won a single game Milwaukee Bucks this is our second regular season game against them we haven't won a single game like it is what it is like we have we have stars in Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, RJ Barrett. Hopefully, oh, I didn't even bring. We didn't even talk about RJ Barrett. Um, but RJ Barrett finally had a good game after his headache uh, issues, uh, after his migraines. Finally had a good game. Um, finally, finally returned to the the player that we thought he could be. He went nine for sixteen. He went two for five from three. Uh, three for four from the free throw. Line. Hit all but one of his free throws. Got rebounds, had three assists, had a steal. 
um, good R.J. Barrett game. We're going to need more of those. We're going to need... We need, need good R.J. Barrett, good Julius Randle games, and good Jalen Brunson games. And I don't think this was a good Jalen Brunson game um, in order to beat these teams. And even then, we still might not win. You know what I mean? Because we still going to need the bench. We still going to need quickly to play. You know, quickly played decently. It wasn't a great quickly game, but it was a good one. Um, and, and Mitchell Robinson needs to be healthy. And in Mitchell Robinson in this game uh, had trouble moving around the court. I, I I don't think he they said that he might have been hurt and that's why he did not start in the second half. Isaiah Hartenstein started in the second half, but I think that is because of already lingering injury issues from Mitchell Robinson. And Isaiah Hartenstein just moves better than him when Mitchell Robinson is playing hurt. And he had to he had the assignment of KP. And then even when he was out there, he got in foul trouble real quick. And Mitchell Robinson had to come out anyway. So um you know, this team is a team where if they're fully healthy and everybody's clicking, yes, they can beat any team in the league. But that's not a given. <laughs> it's not a given. So anyway, I, I've, I'm over this game unless you have any extra thoughts. Nah, I, I couldn't even finish this game. I was, I was tight. After like Jalen Brunson had that little ankle, I just turned the game off. It was like that was the end of the game, bro. <laughs> that was like the last play of the game that I mattered. It was 20, 28 seconds or something like yeah, that left. I watch every second of every Nick game. So when that happened, I, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm done. I mean, it I was, was already starting to zone out. The only like, thing that, that happened, happened, I'm like, damn. The only thing that happened after that was that the, I think the Celtics just held the ball and that was it. Like, it, it was, there was, that game was over right there. When, when Brunson twisted his ankle, nobody, nobody wanted to play. Um, another thing that happened that, you know, in the grander scheme of things, probably uh, was important. The Knicks, like, made it enough of a game to where Jalen Brown was still out there and he was getting really upset and he got a tech. And then shortly after that, he got a second tech and then tried to come after the ref. <laughs> Which, to I'm like, yo, you guys have been up for double digits for this whole second half. Why are you, like, but anyway. Because they know we could have made a run. The game wasn't over. We was only no, up. the game wasn't over. This Knicks team is not one that you you have you do have to put them away, and that's to the Knicks' credit. Like they're not they're not the Wizards. They're not the Hornets. They're not they're not even um, the Heat. Right? Mm -hmm. They're a better they're a better team than a lot of these teams. I mean, some people would say the Heat, you know, and the Knicks are probably on the same level in the regular season. I don't give the Heat that kind of credit. Playoffs, yes. When the playoffs come, I'm scared of the Heat. But in regular season, the Heat can be had just like any other team. Because um, I think at that point in the game, they, like, they were up 19, and then we cut the lead to, like, 11. Right. And then, and then we cut it down to that. 7, and then, yeah. The, the Knicks, listen, you got to put, put the Knicks away, and that's it's to the Knicks' credit. But that does not mean that the Boston Celtics are not a clearly better team than the Knicks. Um, which brings us to our Knicks topic of the week. We're 20 games in, or actually 21 games in. Um, but we've reached that 20 and a half game mark for a quarter of the season. Mm -hmm. How are we feeling about the New York Knicks? Um, me personally, we're at 12 and nine at the time of this recording. I think we're a little bit, I think we're underperforming a little bit, at least to my, toward my ex expectations. Yeah. Um, there's been a few games where I feel like we could have had mm -hmm. the win and we would probably be like third in, a, in the East right now. Um, where do we stand right now in the East? Let me check. We're seventh, I believe. Right. And because we, because of those last two games that we just had. And it's just like, we're a much better team than what we've been playing like. Um, we've had a tough schedule. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to be a, a tough schedule for the next few weeks, but. Where are we standing at right now, I don't feel like we're going to be standing at when it's the halfway point of the season. When we get to the All-Star break, I see the Knicks being a much better team, even if we don't make any trades. And, yeah, once we get a consistent Quentin Grimes, a consistent Emmanuel Quickly, um, Jalen Brunson goes back to shooting the three, like how he's been shooting the three all year, R.J. Barrett getting back to his form before he got that injury. Mitchell Robinson hopefully getting healthier. 
I feel like we can get back to winning games. And like you make it sound like we're not winning games. <laughs> well, it's because we lost every game this week. Right. But was, which was after, only two. Yeah, it was two games, and then we won three right before that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just feels like we could we could be a lot better than what we've been showing. We haven't lost to any bad teams so far this year. I expect that to continue. Mm-hmm. But we got to start beating the, the, the best teams, like... I, I feel like there's only, like, I understand losing to Milwaukee. I understand losing to Boston, even though I feel like we could have won both of those games if we were just locked in. But I don't I don't want to make it a habit of losing to teams like uh, Minnesota, even though they're an elite defensive team. Yeah, it's a very good team. I don't want to make a habit of losing to, like, New Orleans, who was a decent team. Um. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> what are your thoughts? I mean, the Knicks are, I believe, they're undefeated against teams who they are are under five under five hundred, and we um, who is the team that we've beat? Who's over five hundred? Um, Cleveland, Cleveland, Miami, Atlanta, Atlanta, um. And that's about right, right? There's, there's, there. You said Miami, right? <sighs> yes. I think Toronto's going to be over 500. I think Toronto. Said and done. Toronto. Per, mm, I mean, we look at the standings now. Boston Celtics, Boston Celtics, Orlando Magic, who have been defending incredibly well. Milwaukee Bucks, who came into the season title contenders. Philadelphia 76ers, a surprise, especially for me and you. We thought, okay, this whole James Harder thing is going to, turn everything on its head but I did warn you that um, when Joel Embiid is playing the Philadelphia 76ers are just a very good team regardless of who else is on on the court <clears throat> Indiana Pacers another surprise team uh, Orlando Magic is one of the best defensive teams in the league pro- or if not the, the best defensive team in the league um, along with the Minnesota Timberwolves Indiana Pacers are, are going to be uh, a historic offense when this season is said and done, unless Tyrese Halliburton gets hurt, which he's, awesome, which he usually does. Um, the Cleveland Cavs are doing, you know, they're doing okay. They're doing about what we expected them to do. And then it's us, the Nets. Not scared of the Nets. Heat. Not scared of the Heat. Like, in uh, in the list of teams that I just listed. Celtics and the Bucks and maybe the 76ers are the teams that um you know I'm not going to be mad if we lose those games I just want to be in them um and on the west Minnesota Timberwolves could somebody have predicted that they would figure it out with one of the best defensive big men in the league and one of the best offensive big men in the league and Anthony Edwards and one of the best defensive wings in the league no nah, I mean, no, I don't. I don't think it would have been crazy for somebody to say that. You just needed to. Sh- they just needed to prove it to me. And so far this season, they have. Oklahoma City Thunder. They're playing extremely well. Dallas Mavericks. They're playing extremely well. Denver Nuggets are fourth in the West, which means nothing because we know when it comes to playoff time, Jokic is going to put on them chancletas and and, and do what he does. Uh, Lakers, Kings. I mean. We, the West, you still kind of bear it out, but Minnesota Timberwolves, we played and got outclassed. I'm not surprised by that. They're number one in the West. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. For huh? For now. I'm not surprised if they, I wouldn't be surprised if they finished the year number one. I'd be surprised. I think Denver is going to be number one. No. I don't see Oklahoma City staying at number two. I don't see them staying number two. So maybe Minnesota is going to finish top four, but I don't see them staying number one. Who's going to be number one? Denver? Yeah. No. Why not? Denver's Denver don't care. Denver's Denver's gonna stroll their way to the playoffs. They might end up number two or number three. They're not gonna they're not gonna care enough to 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 play all out to get to that number one spot. That's a spot Minnesota is striving for, and they're gonna try and keep that all season. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do. They ain't gotta play, play all out. They just better than most teams in the NBA. They finished number one last year. I want, I want, I I, I just wanna be clear. Denver is the best team in the West. But I don't think that they're going to play 
uh, to get that number one spot. That's a thing. That's a thing. Like the best teams in the league, sometimes when you know, especially after you've won a uh, won a title, you don't need that number one spot. Let me you know, you, you know that whoever you play in the first round, you're gonna wax. You're gonna play somebody in the second round. You're probably gonna wax them too. Then you're gonna go to the conference semis, and that's when you really have to play. Mm-hmm. They don't need that number one spot. But that don't mean they're gonna roll over for teams. Like last mm-hmm. year, they lost 29 games. How many mm-hmm. losses they got this year? Nine. Yeah. Do you see them losing more than 29 games again this year? They don't have to. They don't have to lose more than 29 games to not get that number one spot. Minnesota has only lost four games this year. But when's the last time Minnesota had a 50 win season? It would, and that's what you would need to have 29 losses. Listen, 53 we're, wins. We're, we're, we're getting into the weeds here. Another thing the, Phoenix is also going to be past Minnesota once. If they're healthy, once they're going to get healthy. We, we don't know that. <laughs> We don't know that. They have right. t- they have three of the most injury prone prone superstars in the league. Devin Booker always misses games. Kevin Durant always misses games. Bradley Beal has played what one game this season? Mm-hmm. There is no guarantee that they're gonna all play at the same time or even two of them. But they don't need to play all at the same time for them to be a they like need they, they beat us with just Devin Booker. You think they need many teams are, not, are gonna lose to just Kevin Durant and Devin Booker playing or Bradley Bill and Devin Booker, like they Phoenix need, Suns are tough. They're gonna they're gonna be a better team than they need Minnesota. Two of the three to play consistently throughout the season if they're going to be the number one seed. And that's all we're talking about. They're yeah. gonna be they're gonna be there in the playoffs. We know that. They got Devin Booker. They got Kevin Durant. They only they only need one of them to make that make make them a playoff team. We're not talking about that. We're talking yeah. about them being one of the best teams in the regular season throughout the season. And that I, that's why I say I think Minnesota Timberwolves going to do it because they can they they can go down one of those best guys, and and still be in that number one spot with the defense that they play. They they they're one of the best defensive teams in the league, and and that's going to hold all year. Um, enough about Minnesota. Let's guys. enough about these yeah. other teams. It's the Knicks take um, podcast. Come on. But we but we brought them up just to, to do comparison, and mm-hmm. uh, I do think that Minnesota when they're fully healthy, they're 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 on that level of Boston, uh, Milwaukee. Uh, you might be able to throw Philly in there. Phoenix, when they're fully healthy, like these are all title contending teams. Um, Minnesota, though, is definitely at the bottom of that list, and that's because of um, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Their star player, in Minnesota, Anthony, um, Edwards. Anthony Edwards. Thank you, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> it's them two first names. Um, Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> Anthony Edwards. Yeah, um, that's only because of Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is one of the best. Best. He's he's good. He's real good. So these the, those are title contending teams. The Knicks are not a title contending team. Um, Other topic of the week. You no, know, it's not a topic of the week really. But um, you you put in here. There's been a lot of trade chatter all week for the Knicks. Yeah, Shams from the Athletic. Wrote an article talking about the Knicks are going to be keeping their eye out for star level talent in the trade market this year. We don't need to talk about that. Which is the same thing that we've been <laughs> hearing for the last four years. This is not news, people. Uh, <laughs> during the games when uh, inside the NBA was on TNT, Kenny Smith talking about Paolo Bancaro is better than everyone in the Knicks. They need to make a star level trade. This is not news. Stephen A. Smith on ESPN talking about the Knicks got to make a star level trade. It's like, all right. Every time the Knicks get brought up, we're going to talk about star level trades, but we ain't... Indiana Pacers is perfectly fine. All these other teams that get all this recognition for being good teams, they are perfectly fine. But with us, it's like we're bottom of the barrel, even though we're going to finish the season top five in the East, most likely. Teams are also monitoring... Emmanuel quickly seeing if the Knicks will try to trade him more. All right, let, let me cut. Let me. I'm gonna yeah, cut it's you not, off. It's, it's no this is news. not. This is not news, <laughs> right? The Knicks are looking for not a star player because we already have that, and I think the problem is a lot of people use that word interchangeably. The Knicks are looking for a top ten to fifteen player, point blank period. We don't need a star. We don't need Zach Levine. We don't need Carl Anthony Towns. They need a player who is in that MVP consideration, uh, first team, all NBA consideration player. 
And we knew that coming into the season. Um, and that's it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to feed into any of this. This kind of goes into the how we feel in. We already said how we feel about the Knicks, or at least you did say how you feel about the Knicks. Um, and this is how, I guess, people in the media are feeling about the Knicks. And... I bring it up because the reporters <laughs> asked RJ about it. Yeah, whatever. And it, he seems to agree with us. For, well, let me quote RJ Barrett's response. Mm -hmm. First... We were never going to be good. Now we're good, but we're not good enough. Right. I think we do for not having the best player. We do very well for ourselves. And and I'm gonna. That's just today. The team is still very young. They're getting better, so we're only gonna see the team get much better as time goes on. So listen, the Knicks are top ten in rebounding overall, number five. Yep. They are number one in offensive rebounding percentage, mm -hmm. defensive rebounding percentage, which also makes them number one in total rebound percentage. Knicks are number seven in three-point accuracy. They are number 10 in net rating, which is when you put defensive rating and the offensive rating together, that gives you the net rating. They're number nine in defensive rating, number 11 in offensive rating. Um, I, I have some more things for the Knicks. Uh Second chance points. Knicks are number three. Uh, I already said that. And yeah, the Knicks are good. Like, there's not... They, they, they took a hit against the Milwaukee Bucks in the Boston Celtics games. And they're still top 10 in net rating. By the time, you know, uh, the All-Star game comes around, they're probably going to be in top 10 in both offensive and defensive rating, which will make them definitely top 10, if not top 5 in net rating. The Knicks are going to be, are going to finish this season as one of the 10 best teams in the NBA. And that's not something anybody was saying five years ago, four years ago, three years ago. Like, the Knicks are good, right? And, that, and, and no, they're not... The Milwaukee Bucks. No, they're not the Boston Celtics, but nobody had them there to begin with. And I, I guess because you've you, when you know how, what a team is when you come into the season and they play the season and they're about they're as good as you expected them to be, which is really good. You're not going to get that kind of praise. The same kind of praise that the Indiana Pacers get, the same praise that the Orlando Magic get, the same praise that the Houston Rockets get. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder because they were not expected to be as good as they were. Um, just because the Knicks are not, just because the Knicks are only slightly better, they're not getting that kind of uh, that notoriety. But whatever, like, it's important to it keep is in mind too that we're good. <laughs> that these stats that you just named out came as a result of us having the hardest schedule in the NBA. Correct, which means that it's going to get better. Wait till we play Wizards some more. Wait till we play Portland, Memphis, Houston. Like, we've been playing against the top talent in the NBA. We've had a few games against uh, some below average teams. But we haven't had that stretch of the schedule where it's like, whoa, these all of these games are winnable. I'm going to say this. So wait till that happens. I'm going to say this and then we can move on. The We haven't had the bar game yet. Now that we've started clicking, we started the season and we had some games that is like, okay, we're still trying to figure it out. These teams that we that I just mentioned, the Indiana Pacers, the Orlando Magic, um, the Houston Rockets, the Oklahoma City Thunder, these are bar games. This lets you know how good, just how good are the Knicks? Are the Knicks just outside of being one of those title contending teams or are they just a playoff team? Um, which there's some... You know, I think the Athletic put out something where they ranked the teams and the Knicks were in that third rank of just a playoff team. They are not outside of title contention. They are in that third rung of just playoff teams who we don't expect to make it to the conference finals. If they beat Indiana, Orlando, uh, the Thunder, if they beat these teams, you have to consider them just outside of that title contention spot. Um, and yeah, let's move on. Let's get to these previews. Can't wait to play Chicago. <laughs> Whack ass teams. <laughs> All right. So that would be that would be you. 
brief <laughs> preview. No, I'm just I'm just thinking. You like, try to try to trying to get into it. I understand. <laughs> this week coming up, uh-huh. the Knicks are gonna face off against the Toronto Raptors for their first game back at home, mm-hmm. December 11th, 2023, and tough week this last week. Two mm-hmm. straight losses. Mm-hmm. Um, I could be wrong about this, but the Knicks, from what I remember, have not lost it three games straight all season. I don't think they have, no. And I doubt Toronto's going to be the team that starts that. So mm-hmm. um, we're going to be at home. MSG crowd's going to be wanting to win after we lost two straight, missed out on the in-season tournament. We ain't get to get the home home game at, in Vegas, so we're going to have to make up for it against the Raptors. And I see us taking this one. I see the Knicks take this game. What's your thoughts? Um, I tried to work it in. I, I saw. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting to hear for news on Jalen Brunson. So I'm, I'm assuming that you're gonna you're you're saying the Knicks are gonna take this one. Um, assuming that Jalen Brunson is gonna play, and if we're assu- under the assumption that Jalen Brunson is gonna play, I'm also gonna agree with you that the Knicks are gonna win. Um, it, it didn't seem like that bad of a. Like it, it was a bad ankle turn, but it's not like he j- jumped and landed. So, if he's good enough to walk, he'll be good enough to play. And if he's good enough to play, that'll be good enough for us. So, yes, I also think the Knicks are going to win. We beat the Toronto Raptors last time. Um, and the Raptors are not in the Knicks league, as we saw in that first game. That doesn't mean that they're not good enough to beat the Knicks, but that just means that if Knicks are healthy and uh, we got Julius Randle playing the way that he's been playing, uh, R.J. Barrett, if that if that show in Boston is just a sign of things to come, and if Jalen Brunson is playing, yeah, the Raptors um, are not going to win. Next game, then, mm-hmm. since we agree on Toronto, the Knicks are going to be traveling out west. Who are they going to be facing off at? They're going to be facing off against the Utah Jazz on December 13th, 2023 at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time at the Vivint Smart Home Arena. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, they got to do something about these arena names. I'm sorry. Um, okay, it's the so Utah Jazz. We, don't it's care the, about that. we don't care about the Utah Jazz. I care so little about the Utah Jazz that I just don't even. I I'm like, uh, they, they do have some good players there. They are currently seven and fifteen in the West. Um, Lowry Marketing, I believe, is their star player. They also have Jordan Clark Clarkson. Um, yo, you know who else they got? <sighs> nice. He's nice. Colin Sexton, Chris Dunn. Knicks are winning this one. <laughs> and they better not lose either. I like Walker Kessler, though. I like Walker Kessler, too. And he's actually starting to play well. So this is probably not going to be a, a walk in the park for the Knicks. But they're below 500 team by about six game, uh, eight games. So, yeah, the Knicks should not lose this one. I had to tease Chris Dunn because my man swore he was going to be like the best point guard out that drive. <laughs> Top five pick. Chris Dunn sucks. He stinks. <sighs> Listen, man. He'll be out the NBA soon. Listen, Jay. I, our mom would not um, would not be uh, liking to hear you badmouth these NBA players like this. So let's just move on to the next game. <laughs> <laughs> My fault, Ma. <laughs> let's move on to the next game. Next game. <laughs> the Knicks are going to stay out west. <laughs> Still thinking about Chris Dunn, Ma. I see. Black ass. Um, we're gonna be playing off. We're gonna be facing off against the Phoenix Suns in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. At where? At the Footprint <laughs> Center. The Footprint Center. December fifteenth at ten p.m. Um, I feel like this is a game where we got to get our lick back. We lost to Devin Booker by himself last time at home. Mm-hmm. Um, KD's back now. Mm-hmm. I think we can. Possibly finish this week out undefeated. Huh. Is I that think ch- we can. Is- I think we could beat Phoenix at home. Um. I think it's going to be a real close game, possibly mm-hmm. an overtime game, but we gotta we gotta get our lick back. 
That's your official prediction. That that we're prediction. that we're going to get our lick back. Not yeah. that we have to, but that we're going to. Yeah. We're gonna um, get back. AD did not play in the last yeah. game. Was that a back to back? Uh, if it was a back to back, then he'll probably play in this game. Um, listen, man, if KD's playing, I'm just gonna have to call it a loss. Um, I don't think that. Uh, it's, I, I just the Knicks haven't shown me that they can win these games yet, and until they do, I'm gonna call them losses, and. This could be a game where the Knicks show, you know, after, especially after getting embarrassed against the Celtics and against the Bucks. You know, Phoenix come in, you already lost to them as well. You know, on a buzzer beater by Devin Booker. Um, this is not even a, a second half of back to back, so KD definitely is going to play. I mean, Phoenix got a few losses under their belt, too. They lost to San Antonio twice. Right. They lost to Toronto. They lost to Lakers twice. Like, right. they're beatable. We could get them. I didn't say that they're not beatable. I'm not saying that they're not beatable. I'm just saying that they have shown that once they've got their stuff figured out, it's a hard out. Um, and that wasn't that wasn't that Sacramento game wasn't a back-to-back. So maybe KD doesn't play. I'm not entirely sure. That whole that this is why I'm like, yeah, they miss these guys are gonna miss games. Um, Spurs only won three games all season. If yes. two of them, against, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that was that was back when Suns thought they. Were, I mean, excuse me, the uh, Spurs thought they were doing something. Um, if it's just Devin Booker and the Knicks are relatively healthy, I'll give it to you, but. I don't think that's how it's, going to, how it's going to play out. Teams like to show up for the Knicks. Um, so I'm assuming Kevin Durant is going to play. I'm assuming I'm assuming Devin Booker is going to play. And if they both play, it's going to be a hard game. I think it's going to be hard fought. I think the Knicks are going to take it to the final minutes. They're not going to get blown out because I don't think with just the two of them um, that the Phoenix Suns are on that type of level. But I think the Phoenix Suns are still going to win. And that's my prediction. Two and one this week. Two and one. Deal with it. And you think three and oh. All right. So programming notes, people. Next week, um, I may or it may not be a part of the Knicks Take Podcast episode 67. Uh, we'll still figure that out. But don't be alarmed if you see that. We still will have an episode coming out next week. Um, and it's possibly going to be recorded a day later. So prediction. Clippers play Saturday against the New York Knicks. Do we have to do? We, yes. I mean, can't I just give you my predictions next week after no. we see how these games go? That's usually how it goes. If we record on Sunday, the Clippers and the Knicks will have played already, and we have not spoken about it. So okay. After Phoenix, the Knicks are going to head to LA. Mm-hmm. What's the name of the arena? Um, probably something stupid. It's the come on. It's the old Staples Arena. You know the name of it. I don't. It's the emoji, uh, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> Lakers arena that the Clippers play in. Mm-hmm. The Knicks. Oh, the crypto. Crypto.com arena. Crypto.com arena. Yo. So. NBA, y'all got to do better, for real. <laughs> At um, 1030, December 16th, the Knicks are going to face off the Clippers. Who you got? I got the Knicks. Um, Clippers have still have not figured it out. And... We played them already. Yeah, we're hard in and first we, game. And we won. Yep. And I don't see anything different. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I'm calling that a win. I don't, I don't think that requires much. I think the Clippers do have the po- have the potential to be one of these really good teams. These, you know, on the outside looking in of the title contention and maybe even title contention if they can figure it out. But they're not there yet. So, Nick should win. That you agree with that. Knicks for are sure. going undefeated no, 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 this no, no, week. No, 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 nope, no. Nope, what? Nope, nope. I'm not giving all of my predictions next week. If you want to hear my predictions, you got to tune into the Knicks Take Podcast, episode 67 next week, which could just be French by himself. But if it's not, then I would like to save those predictions for when I'm here. I'm talking about this week. What? We already did this week. Yeah. Plus the Clippers, they staying undefeated. That's and, what I'm saying. Okay. All right. Cool. 
I'm not doing nothing no more than that. You go try. You, you tried to hit me with the okie doke just now, and I'm not. I need yeah, no. All right. You say four though. I'm saying three and one. I bet. All right. Cool. All right. Um. Yeah. So with that, we're gonna sign out. We'd like to bid you adieu. Thank you for, for listening, listening to, to the Knicks Tape Podcast. Podcast. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening. Peace out.